Hello, welcome. I'm Brian Flanders, and I'm excited today to work on hips. So first, let's discuss a little bit of theory of why I think hips are so important and why we should be working on them. Um, number one thing I want to talk about is compression and the way that compression happens. When my low back is loose or my knees are loose, and my hips are tight when I walk, that jolt shows up in the back and, and in the knees. But if those big strong hips are loose and can take that impact, then all of a sudden that takes some of the pressure off of our knees and low back. So think of that, taking this, this joint that's really big and strong, distributing more of the impact to that, also gives us longer life of our knees and low back. So if you have struggle with either of those, hips is a really good answer for it. Next is daily life. Anytime we move through our hips, we're, we're doing just about anything. Anytime we sit, walk, jump, run, um, even, even laying down can be affected by what our hips are doing. And so we want you know, if every activity, just about every activity includes hips, we want to be really healthy in our hips. And finally, let's talk about nerve pain. So there's a specific practice called nerve flossing, and think you have the spinal column that's really neat that, that distributes all these nerves going down it, but once those nerves pass the spinal column, they go through the pelvis, and, and there's a lot of because it doesn't have this clean column, there's a lot of chance of pinching. So a lot of people end up with sciatic pain and, and nerve pain, um, and then they do what's called flossing to help relieve some of that, and that's just creating a cleaner channel for those nerves. Well, general hip health also gives you that. It gives you that freedom of your nerves to to move and glide, and so we don't end up with that nervy pain in our back. So hip health, huge. I want us to feel good. Um, we'll explore both passive stretches, active stretches, and we'll really get into internal rotation and external rotation and see if we can <clears throat> make our hips feel awesome. So let's start off by coming to hands and knees. At hands and knees, I want us just to do a gentle sway side to side. I'm really pushing to the side and kind of have this energy of a up to get that deep stretch to each side. So this is our level one. You can stick with this and continue to create space for your back through your hips, or we can make it a little deeper. If you wanna go deeper, bring your right knee forward and your left leg back. Now that same sway side to side, stretch the hip, and then stretch the opposite hip flexor. Stretch the hip, stretch the opposite hip flexor, and even into that groin. Sway so side to side, just doing a little bit of mobility work to get deeper into those hips. And let's switch sides or continue to do the modification at hands and knees. And what I'm looking for is, does it bother my back or does it bother my knees? If it bugs either of those, staying at hands and knees is a great option to see how far you can go side to side and start to warm those hips up. Nicely done. Okay, come to hands and knees. So stretching and strengthening our hips includes our hip flexors. So let's do a little bit of glute work and hip flexor work as we go to a gentle camel pose. Drive the feet down, 
push the hips forward and squeeze the glute. Tendency is for your low back to squeeze in. Try to keep the inner thighs pushing back as the hips go forward to create space for the back. Lift your heart up. I don't need to be in my biggest one in the back because my focus today is the hips. Nicely done. Let's go to the other extreme. Let's drop back to a child's pose and tuck the tailbone under. Come forward to an arch and draw the tailbone under and inner thighs back and drop back. Opening up and dropping back. Hey, let's turn this into a little bit of a flow that includes our cobra pose. So come down to your belly, lift up either keeping your thighs on the floor or, or lifting all the way up to upward facing dog. But in either case, I'm looking more for a hip flexor stretch. So tuck the tailbone under, push the inner groins back and push those hips to the floor. Then round, tuck the tailbone under and then come to standing on your knees and push the hips forward. Round, tuck the tailbone. Draw forward, stretch the hip flexor. Round, open, inhale, exhale, rounding, inhale, opening, exhale, rounding, inhale, opening. Last one through, rounding, opening, Rounding and our camel. Okay, let's add a little bit of side stretching to those hip flexors, both in our camel pose and our cobra pose or our upward facing dog. So let's start in cobra pose. Lift like a standard one, look to one side, but push the opposite hip down. Then look to the other side and push that hip down. Draw back to our child's pose. Reach the hands to one side and stretch. Reach the hands to the other side and stretch. Come up towards a camel pose. One hand reaches back towards the heel. Add a little swoop to the side to stretch that hip. Add a little swoop, push into that hip. Coming down, cobra pose. Look to one side, open the front of the hip. Look to the other side, open the front of the hip. Pull back, let's go more extreme. Drop the hips to one side, pull. Drop the hips to the other side, and pull. Sweep up, one arm goes back, one arm goes around. Single arm camel pose. Let's do it one more time. Cobra pose. Look to the side, stretch that hip flexor. Look to the side, stretch the hip flexor. Child's pose, drop the hips to one side. Child's pose, drop the hips to the other side. Camel pose, single arm sweep. Camel pose, single arm sweep. And come back to a neutral position. Really good. Okay. Let's get into our internal and external rotation of the hips. Take your legs wide. So tendency in this one is to twist. Try to keep the pelvis neutral and see how far you can take the femur bone in the hip socket from side to side. Okay, that's our level one. Level two is hands behind. Take the knees side to side, shin box switches. So you can stay at level one or you can stay at level two. If you want an extra level, let's add a little extra effort by taking the arms forward as we go side to side, really flossing through those hips. 
We can stay at any of those levels, or we can add a little internal rotation by twisting, lifting the foot, driving the knee down to exaggerate the internal rotation of the hip. So now we have four different variations. Stick with any of those or add a little hip extension. Shin box switch, up and lift. Shin box switch, up and lift. Open the front of those hips. I hope that feels good. And come on back. Okay, so hopefully we've really threaded through and gotten into those hips. So let's get into some active stretches that then will turn passive. So our 90-90, bring your right leg forward, left leg out, and I want this to come through my hips. So the modification is to use your fingers to do a little press and lift up, but the energy is my shin pushing down to lift me up. Really good. Let's do the back leg towards internal rotation. So I have to lean a little bit forward, but my eventual goal would be to be all the way upright. Push the knee down, lift the back foot up. and switch sides. Left leg forward, right leg back. Fold in forward, but use the leg to push yourself up. And let's get into the back leg. Lift that back foot up. Eventually I wanna be to the place where I'm upright but I need to lean a little bit forward to be able to get that ankle off the floor. But I'm driving that knee down. Nicely done. All right, I wanna show you one of my favorite hip stretches. I like to use weight for this one, but weight isn't necessary. You could just do it body weight. So I do what I call a modified warrior two. My hips are open. I'm going to rack it and hold the weight at my chest. Tendency is to lean towards the knee, stay upright, and really take the tailbone towards the heel. Really efficient and safe way to get deep into those hips. This is one of my favorite hip stretches and hip strengtheners. Let's switch sides. Easier way is to keep the weight down, or obviously not to have any weight at all. Nicely done. Okay, let's get at our pigeon pose, you know, classic hip stretch. I want to show you how I generally see pigeon pose, and then I want to offer a modification that I like. So generally, people bring the heel back, and they don't get a ton of hip stretch because of it. The f when the knee is at a 90 degree angle, that's when it really traps the hip and stretches it. So I would rather, <laughs> Instead of having my foot back, I would rather my knee be up and my foot be forward. And the way I accomplish that, I'll do it to the side, is by using props. So I'm going to use some blocks, pillows or blankets could be used. So I sit on the blocks, but I frame that front leg with my bolster. I wrap the bottom leg or the back leg down and now I'm at this really deep hip stretch because it's at a 90 degrees and I have no pressure on my knee because my knee is lifted. 
then I can start to fold and get a huge stretch. Let's do the second side. So I have my bolster or my pillow or a blanket. I create this little L shape, put that leg across, the other leg back, and I fold forward, getting deep into that hip. Let's do a grounding pose for our hips. Lay on your back. Take your hands on your knee, your knee above your hip. Relax the hips down into the floor and let everything ground. And take your feet a little bit wide, bring the knees a little together, take your arms wide, and let's stay here for a moment. Try to relax the back, relax the hips. and bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. Take a moment to check in. I hope your hips feel amazing. And more than that, I hope your posture feels amazing. When we get the hips right, everything works right. So we want healthy and happy hips. Thanks for joining. Namaste.